Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and today we're going to talk about a deck that you can pick up 100% free on Pokemon TCG Live. That is Issue in Zoroark V-Star. This 270 HP normal type V-Star Pokemon is capable of dealing massive knockouts with its attack Tickling Curse. For two colorless energy we deal 50 damage times the amount of Pokemon on our side of the field that have damage counters on them. That means that we can theoretically, with six Pokemon damaged, get to 300 damage with this attack plus a choice bone, 330 will be knocking out pretty much every Pokemon in the game. Now obviously it's not as easy as that, we can't simply get damage on all of our Pokemon, but it's definitely possible to see us taking one shots on Pokemon V-Stars and V-Maxes alike. Added onto that, very powerful attack, we also have a very powerful V-Star power, that is Phantom Star, an ability that we can deploy at any point during the game that will allow us to discard our hand and draw seven cards. Professor's Research, obviously a staple supporter in the standard format, using that supporter's effect twice in a turn means that we have some very, very explosive turns with Zoroark V-Star. Now, as I mentioned, the deck is free at the moment on the Battle Pass. If we jump across and go all the way back to the very, very start, look, you can't see it, there it is, this one here, you actually get given a base set of uh, Zoroark V and V Star, like 2 2 of those, as well as all the Gengars and Gate Jaw Bogs that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and then you can collect the rest of the set of those Zoroarks all the way through until tier 8, when you actually get your fourth Hisuian Zoroark V Star. So definitely worth investing in if you have the opportunity. Uh, the rest of the cards in the deck are relatively simple. We obviously want to get damage counters on our board as quickly as possible. A good way to do that will be using. Gengar, which as I explained, you get for free when you log in to PTCG Live. Gengar has the ability Netherworld Gate, which means that when Gengar is in the discard pile, you can use that ability to put Gengar back on the bench with three damage counters on it. That's going to give you an extra 50 damage from your Zoroark, but combine that with a card like Damage Pump, which we play four copies of, and you can see how very quickly we can get one or two damage counters on a bunch of different Pokemon. Pokemon. Damage Pump allows us to move up to two Pokemon from one of our Pokemon to any of our Pokemon in any way that we like. One Gengar plus one Damage Pump equals 150 damage with our Hisuian Zoroark, and that's really, really easy to do considering we're drawing so many cards. If that is not enough though, we also have access to the Stadium Gape Jaw Bog. This is a very, very easy way for us to get damage on our Pokemon. We put the Stadium in play, and then every time either player benches a Pokemon from their hand, they will deal 20 damage to that Pokemon. It not only deals extra damage for us, gives us that extra 50 multiplier, but can also push some Pokemon into a slightly nicer damage range. For example, basic Pokemon V that have 220 HP, when they get played down under Gape Jaw Bog, then have 200 instead of 220, which as you can imagine is much easier for us to hit than 250. So definitely a very, very good inclusion here. The list itself is relatively straightforward, you can catch it all down in the description if it's too hard to see on that side of the screen. One card that I really like in Zoroark at the moment though is Powerful Colorless Energy, which lets us deal even more damage if we are able to attach them. That is definitely a card that I would recommend, as well as a card like Deancey to stop your opponent from being able to gust up your attackers in the early game. That can potentially be a problem. Deancey goes in the active and says no. I'm actually not, I'm not going to allow you to do it. It's not going to happen. It's as simple as that. Hey, I think that Zoroark V-Star is really, really good. And the fact that you can get this deck effectively for free, there's only two or three cards that you actually need to craft at the start of the game, means that you, as a new player, can play live with a competitive deck straight away with no problems. We'll jump over onto the standard ladder now and see if we can't get a couple of games with Zoroark, but I'm sure we'll be able to take some pretty big knockouts. Game time, and we are up against Arceus V here. We are playing some games with Zoroark, and we'll see if we can't get 
a couple of big knockouts to try and win this one. Arceus V feels like a pretty good matchup to show off the power of Zoroark V-Star because they are not necessarily going to be able to take one-shots on us super easily. Uh, looks like a capture energy going on to Arceus and grabbing another Sobble on the bench is the play from our opponent. So we will see what we are capable of doing here. Getting a Gapejaw Bog seems pretty good. We can throw down a Zoroark and put some damage counters on it. Uh, and then I'm thinking we might just go... Let's think here. We might be able to Quick Ball and grab another Pokemon. Maybe a Deancey or even a second Crobat could be our option. Um, let's see. What is the best way to go about this? We can't get a knockout on the Arceus this turn. We can't get a knockout on the Sobble. Let's go for the Ultra Ball. We'll get rid of both of these escape ropes and grab another copy of Crobat. Luminion's in the deck, so it might be worth getting that at some point as well. I like the Crobat though. At this stage, we can Crobat. We've got a Quick Ball in hand. We can go for Luminion if we need a Supporter. So we're going to Dark Asset and draw four cards and uh, see what we come across. I like the fact that we've got another Zoroark here. I like the fact that we've got a Quick Ball. We can get rid of the Cancelling Cologne and grab it Deancey. Um, and then what we might do, to be brutally honest, we might bench this Deancey here. Uh, we might retreat into the Deancey and then use the Capture Energy on the Deancey to firstly get a basic Pokemon in play. Um, we could choose to grab that Gardevoir, which I really like the idea of. And then also, we can Spike Draw here and grab not only a couple of points of damage on the active, but also draw two cards, which I am a big, big fan of. So we'll do that. Uh, and hopefully that's enough pressure on our opponent that we might be able to sneak a knockout on an Arceus V just that little bit easier. Uh, the Arceus V star coming into play now might make it a bit more difficult, but the numbers are still effectively the same, and I think we should be okay. 260 damage means we need 5 Pokemon. Now with a big charm means we need the full 6 to get the knockout, but now we also probably need a choice build as well. So we'll wait and we'll wait and see. Maybe the Deancey wasn't the correct play. It's all right. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. I'm, I'm sure it will not be a problem. Thank you very much, everyone, by the way, for joining in and watching these games on Pokemon TCG Live. If you'd like to download it, it's just been opened up to a bunch of new locations. Uh, I believe many of the Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, I believe, and also uh, the Netherlands have also been opened to the beta, so you are more than welcome to jump in and join me on live. I think it is definitely a good thing going forward, and as you can see, the gameplay is actually really crisp and smooth. At the moment, it plays relatively nicely, so I'm thinking uh, thinking might, might stay with it. I mean, it's defi I'm definitely going to stay with it because I've migrated. And if you'd like to see the stream in which I migrated, you'll be able to find that in my live stream playlist, which will be found on my YouTube page. Uh, so you can check that out. Every time a new live stream is uploaded, they will go in there. Um, and a reminder, by the way, that live streams happen at approximately 6 p.m. my time, uh, which is Australian Daylight Standard, uh, Daylight Savings Time, ADST, AEDT, whatever it is, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, which uh, you can then turn into your own, your own time, whatever, it is, whatever time zone it is. They're going to happen at a roughly 6 p.m. And they're not going to happen every week, but they're going to happen lots. So, well, not lots, but enough times. Enough times for it to be relevant. Alright, Arceus has taken a knockout on Deancey and has put a whole bunch of damage counters, uh, not damage counters, a whole bunch of energy on the benched Arceus V. We have a couple of good cards in our hand, uh, specifically Zoroark V-Star and Professor's Research jump out, and that double turbo energy makes my life way easier. I'm a big fan of that. We can play down the Zoroark, play down the double turbo, and then quick ball. We're going to go looking for a card here that we don't necessarily care about. Dunsparce might be able to discard. We only have one choice spell. Means it's going to be a little bit difficult to get a KO. Um, that's okay. We'll go for the research, and we'll just see whether or not we can come up with a hand. Uh, this is not that hand, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we may need to play down the bog to get the... Uh, to get the ability going, but we're going to lose a lot of valuable cards. So the question is, can we afford to play this game without double boss? 
I feel like we probably need to just bench the uh, play the Gabe Jaw, bench the Zoroark, and then just draw as many cards as we can. Um, it's unlikely from here that we take the knockout. We'd need like double damage mover and a double damage pump and also a choice belt. You know what? We almost got it there. We almost gosh darn got it. So we've got the damage pump. We can move some damage away from our Zoroark, which I like. Uh, and then I think it might just be a matter of retreating into our Zoroark V-Star and attacking with Tickling Curse. We don't really need to use any of the other cards in our hand at the moment. Ultra Ball and Damage Pump will be useful for later. We'll just attack for 210 damage. That is uh, 250 minus the uh, 20 from Gardevoir and the 20 from Double Turbo. Just had to remember why I was uh, doing 210 there, but that's that's the reason why. Um, but yeah, we're in a relatively good spot. Our opponent has taken one prize instead of two, which means that there are still two knockouts that they need to take uh, before we are threatened to lose the game. Uh, they can knock out both of these Crobats, but then they'll need to use boss three times, and it's unlikely that an Arceus deck will play it. We also have the benefit of being able to tank every hit this Arceus gives us. So they're going to be hitting us for, what, 200 minus 20 from the Radiant Gardevoir on our side of the field, 180 damage. Uh, that means that we should be able, theoretically, should be able to uh, get a couple of attacks off before Arceus takes some prizes. And they obviously have Sharon, so they can do the same thing, but I think it's going to be easier for us to just attack every turn uh, than it is for them to uh, to get attacks off uh, whilst also maintaining Sharon's. I hope I'm making sense here. I feel like my uh, I feel like my commentary's off. I did wake up just just from a nap relatively recently, so that might be uh, that might be part of the reason why I'm not saying things in an order that makes any sense. I feel like my voice is going as well, which is a concern, considering I need that to you know talk. But that's alright. It's alright. It's going to be fine. It is going to be fine. It's our turn and we have multiple targets that we could potentially hit here. We are currently dealing 300 damage, minus 20 from the Gardevoir, minus 20 from the Zoroark, and minus 20 from Lake Acuity. But luckily, that is still enough for us to get a knockout on this Arceus V with three water energy on it. So I would rather take the one-shot knockout here and uh, start off with a couple of prizes than anything else. We've also managed to unprize a choice belt, which is fantastic. So that is a massive, massive win for us. Uh, we also have the powerful colorless energy on the Zoroark on the bench, which means that it's possible for this Zoroark on the bench to take a complete full knockout on Arceus V-Star. We will need to contend with the Gardevoir V, or the Radiant Gardevoir, sorry, on the bench, which is making it just that little bit harder for us to KO. We'll also need to deal with Lake Acuity, but I'm sure that it's going to be possible for us to eventually take a knockout on this V-Star. And if it's not, then I don't think that it's going to be that big of a problem. I think we're still going to be able to knock out two Arceus V-Stars before our opponent is capable of knocking out three Pokemon V. In saying that, they could just gust up two Crobats in the next two turns. That may be a solution to their problem. But I'm going to back ourselves in here with Professor's Research, Choice Belt, and Damage Pump in our hand that we will be able to get a one-hit knockout on at least one of these Arceus V-Stars. So we will see how we go. Sobble being played down. Obviously, Scoop Up Nets putting in work over there on our opponent's side of the field, picking up Inteleons and Drizziles all over the place. And there's two prizes... 310 HP on the Arceus, hits into the Zoroark V-Star, and takes the KO. So, we now need to take a one-hit knockout to stay on pace to win the game. And, you know, I think we'll be able to do it as long as a couple of things go our way. Uh, Choice Belt, obviously a good card for us to top deck. Means we can throw that down onto both of our Hisuian Zoroark Vs and V-Stars. Uh, we have Ultra Ball here, which I like. We'll Ultra Ball away Deancey and the Ultra Ball. 
Do we just bench the Deance? No, we, we need the extra damage. Let's grab a Gengar. We have an extra boss. We have an extra powerful colorless. I'm feeling confident. Let's research and we'll see whether we can hit an energy we do, which is really, really big. Not only do we hit an energy, we also hit the Gape Jaw Bog, which is very, very nice. Let's use that Netherworld Gate ability to pop the Gengar on the bench. And then we will be able to retreat into our Zoroark V-Star. We can then... I think, I think we need to play the Bog. I think so. 350. We didn't even need to play the bog down to take this knockout because we're dealing 300 damage, right? Here's the maths. Let me take these prizes and we'll do the maths. Two prizes. Bang. Beautiful. Fantastic prizes, by the way. Very happy with those. Here's the maths. We're dealing 300 damage, right? Because every Pokemon on our side of the board has counters on it. We're plussing 30 to that because we've got Choice Belt. Then we're plussing another 40 to that because we've got two powerful colors. That means that we are dealing 370 damage at the moment. If there are no modifiers in play, then we are dealing 370 damage. That's capable of knocking out anything in the game, even if they have a big charm on it. Anything with a big charm knocked out by that Zoroark just then. Very, very powerful. Very, very strong attacker. And did I mention that you get this deck effectively free? on Pokemon TCG Live. Did I mention that? That you get everything, including the Crobats and the Gengars and the Damage Pumps and the Gape Jaw Bog and all 4-4 four, four of the Zoroarks for free? But yeah, no, but seriously, it's free. So, you should... You should consider it. You should consider getting, getting live if you can. How many Bogs have we used? Three? Okay, we still have one. Although, to be fair... We are knocking out this guard of uh, this Arceus even with the Lake Acuity in in play, right? It's happening. This is this is the thing. It is happening. We are knocking out this V Star even if we don't attach the powerful colors. Even if we don't, we are still taking the knockout. Isn't that incredible? It's genuinely incredible to me. There goes the Arceus. Takes the knockout on the Crobat. Probably needed to do that last turn. Or two turns ago, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But that's okay. It's three prizes to do. They're going to go down to one prize remaining. And then we are going to use our ultra-mega-powerful Zoroark V-Star with two powerful colorses and a choice belt on it to take a knockout on Arceus V-Star with a big charm. Now, the only thing that we will need to do is we will need to research this hand, because I want to see that extra Gengar on the field. We do need the damage from Netherworld Gate. Although, to be fair, I don't know that we needed to. I'm not sure that we needed to, now that I'm thinking about it, because we're dealing 370, that's 390 before the Radiant Gardevoir takes effect. We could have, we could have actually done that without the Gengar there. We could have taken a knockout on an Arceus V-Star with a big charm on it, with four bench damage Pokemon. Inst uh, five in play instead of six. It's wild. Dex cracked. Back into it. And not as good a start as our last game. Manaphy, obviously, a little bit of a weaker opening. But we've at least got access to Zoroark and DTE and Crobat. So we've got some cards to play. I don't mind this at all. We can throw down the DTE. We can throw down the damage pump. Uh, move one of the points of damage to Manaphy, uh, just to get that out of the hand. We can then Crobat for five, and hopefully this sets up a really, really strong game for us. Uh, we have got a couple of cards that are useful there. Radiant Gardevoir definitely can come down now. The Luminion, though, I will probably keep in my hand. Let's end the turn there and see what our opponent is playing. At the moment, a Luminion in the active doesn't give us a huge amount of information. Uh, it could be anything, really. I don't know. Capacious Bucket provides us a little bit more information, although it's not quite as obvious as I'd like it to be. Palkia jumps out as a potential, um, although Palkia doesn't always play Luminion. If it is Palkia that we're playing against... It's going to be a very interesting matchup because Palkia is one of those decks that can very easily win against pretty much anything. So we'll wait and see whether it is. We've seen a Crobat and a Greninja, so it's not guaranteed to be Palkia yet. 
Uh, but they are now playing a couple of cards. Can we see? Is this a Palkia deck? Water Energy and Boss into the discard pile. They are going to grab an Origin Form Palkia V. Okay, so this is actually quite good for us because not only are we going first against Palkia, but they are also playing down Palkias into the Game Jaw Bog. That means that we theoretically, I can't stress this enough, theoretically have a bit of an easier time knocking out a V-Star. And the key thing for Zoroark is taking two prize knockouts. If we can continually take two prize knockouts, we should be able to get ourselves a victory. The issue is going to be if our opponent is able to move the Luminion out of the active and replace it with a basic Pokemon that is not worth two prizes, like Greninja or a Sobble, which I assume that we are VIP battle passing for here. No. Okay. So, maybe this is not Palkia. Maybe this is Kiram. The Oranguru jumps out at me as being a Kiram card. Alright. So, this is now a very different equation. Because Palkia Inteleon is capable of going very, very quickly, but also putting down Pokemon that I don't want to knock out. Kiram, not so much. So, we're going to grab ourselves another Zoroark. We do want to know whether or not we can get a Switch card here, whether that just be an attachment or otherwise, is up to the gods. We're going to research. We've got seven cards to look at. There's an Escape Rope, which I like. We've also got Ultra Ball to discard Gengar if we want to. We can also use Capture Energy to attach to the Manaphy and Retreat. If we use Escape Rope, then they will definitely put something that's a one prize Pokemon in the active. So I think we need to use Capture in order to retreat here. The question is, do we want to use Capture to grab a Pokemon or not? Well, let's have a look and see what we've got. We've got Zoroark and Dunsparce. If we grab the Zoroark, it won't have counters on it, but that's not a big deal at the moment. We can always get counters on it later. Let's retreat into the Zoroark, and then I think we are in a position where we can simply just attack. Now, this is going to be uh, a little bit awkward. We're going to put a little bit of pressure on ourselves here. Since we attached with the energy to the... Oh, there's double Deancey. Okay, fair enough. Since we attached with an energy to the Manaphy, rather than attaching the capture energy to the Zoroark on the bench, now we have locked ourselves in to a bit of a trade where we must find double turbo energies. Like, it is non-negotiable. Double Turbo Energy needs to be the energy that we play unless our opponent whiffs an attack, which is unlikely. Palkia is obviously going to be able to get big knockouts very quickly. We have to fill our bench up. Our opponent's got a pretty big bench as well, so they will take knockouts. Since they're knocking out a Zoroark every turn, or at least we can assume that they are going to, we need to find Zoroark V-Star. We need to find double turbo energy every single turn. And I would also like to see Gapejaw Bog remain in play. That training court is not ideal at, the, at, at, at all. It's not ideal at all. On the plus side, though, we do have the opportunity now to Phantom Star next turn. The question is, do we want to use Phantom Star or do we want... Uh, and, and Boss's Orders. Do we want to use that to take a knockout on a Pokemon like Crobat that might be a little bit easier to knock out? Or do we want to just simply let it rip, go for the Phantom Star, and hope that that's enough to get into some draw supporters to give us a easier knockout? Might be the case. Might be the case. Here's the Palkia. There's a Kurum. Okay. What is this Palkia going to be able to do? You have to assume that Star Portal is incoming here. Maybe just an attachment, potentially. I don't know how many energy they have in the discard pile. I'm not going to check. Why would I check? I'm just going to let them play. But the subspace swell... Only deals 240 because of the Radiant Gardevoir. This is incredible. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have stumbled upon an absolute 
incredible series of events here. Not only have I accidentally stopped my Zoroark from getting knocked down, but I have also given myself another opportunity to use Phantom Star next turn. We can boss this turn if we want to, or we can simply take a knockout on the active. 260 is the amount that we need. That is incredible. There's the DTE, so we would have been able to use boss regardless. I'm going to grab another Zoroark here just to make sure that we have every option going forward. I like this a lot. I like the fact that Tickling Curse is doing perfect maths at the moment. 260 damage. Because of the 20 from the Gapejaw Bog, I told you it would come up. Let's grab ourselves some prizes. I'm feeling very proud. I'm glad that the Radiant Cardivore came up. Everything is working as intended. <sighs> just gonna, I'm just going to sit back and marvel at my own... Whatever it is that I have, it's not intelligence. I think it's more luck than anything. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, and and here's the thing, right? We've got Gengar in the bin already. We can use that to get the damage counters on our radiant up uh, on our field for our radiant sorrow arc. The boss's orders in hand. We'll be able to take the last two prizes of the game. You can see now our opponent going for. A Kyurem here. Kyurem is very, very difficult to knock out. There's a Palkia as well. So the Star Portal is available. If they want it. It's available. Primate Wisdom. Pops presumably an energy on top. And we'll see Glaciated World by Kyurem to grab that energy. I really like the idea of Kyurem. I don't know if it's the best deck floating around at the moment. But it's definitely interesting. Definitely one to watch. Lots of people played it at Salt Lake City, I will say that much. Alright, I think we've done it. I think it's over. I don't know that there's much that our opponent's going to be able to do from here. They're going to Star Portal and accelerate a bunch of energy to the Kyurem in the hopes that they survive a hit and then can knock out another Zoroark next turn. But we, we are pretty, we're pretty cruisy. We're happy here. We're well, liking this. Max Frost takes a knockout. They don't need to discard any energy to take the KO here. So the question becomes, do we have enough damage to knock out a Crobat on the bench? And ladies and gentlemen, yes we do. We absolutely do. We have enough damage right now, but we are going to guarantee it even further by placing a Gengar from our discard pile. In fact, we might as well put another Gengar in there, right? Let's pop, pop another Gengar in that discard pile. We can even just play this Zoroark down. Like, I mean, there's, there's so many options for us. We've got so many options. Chuck the Gengar down. That is 250 damage, minus 20 from the DTE. Boss's orders onto the Crobat, and Tickling Curse takes the KO. We take the victory, and uh, that's pretty impressive, frankly, for a deck that... Did I mention this deck's free? Did I mention it's free? Uh, I can't remember. Check the, check the title, I think it's free. Why that feels like a pretty solid explanation as to why Zoroark V-Star is so strong. It just has the ability to take knockouts on pretty much anything. And the best thing is, when it gets in front, it stays in front. It's one of those decks that can just steamroll home. Hey, thanks very much. If you have stuck around, then you are one of the many legends who loves Pokemon TCG and enjoys the sound of my rambling voice. If you do, then please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would be great. Uh, and if you'd like to financially support the channel, even in a minor way, by paying $3 a month or something silly uh, like that, three Australian dollars as well, so it's barely even worth putting... Uh, putting the money in at all, really, like it's nothing, then please become a member. Here's a list of them over here. They are currently being, well, they're about to be covered up by a copy of a video on Gudra, which is very, very cool. Just one Salt Lake City. So if you're looking for another meta deck that's relatively easy to pick up on Pokemon TCG Live, that is the deck for you. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you next time for more from the Sableyes. Bye.